to you, Frank. A dollar, huh? What if I want to raise it too? We don't hate your guts. <laughs> then I'll raise it five. Oh. Five shekels, huh, Frank? You know, I remember when this was a friendly game. Cozy little get-together. And we had a few laughs. And I wasn't dealt trash. <laughs> My pardon me, Ronnie. Look, everybody, I want you all to see this. A pair of queens. And I'm throwing them in. Normally, no one in his right mind would, but I am. You want to know why? Because if I've got queens, the chief's got kings. I've got kings. He must have aces. Oh. I see your five. I'm out. Oh, one card, Joe. Right. And I will play these. Ooh. Oh, Mary, you're playing those, are you? All right, five bucks. Oh, he did it. He filled it straight. He's bluffing five and up five. Ooh, Whoa. that's a mistake, Mary. I told you we shouldn't let women into the game. <laughs> I'll just see your five, Mary. Now, can you beat a queen high straight? Ooh. <laughs> so, you've got a queen high straight, have you, Frank? Yeah. And do you want to know if I can beat a queen high straight? You know damn well I can't beat a queen <laughs> high straight. Thank you. Don't fall apart, Mary Brenner. All we have left is our dignity. Ed, your fly is open. <laughs> Cab fare if I walk the last few blocks. Come on, guys. I can't be hot all night. And I will cash personal checks. Yeah, Mary. What is it, Frank? You want to cut cars for my cab fare? You know, sometimes I get on these hot streaks where everything I do just turns out right for me. Did you notice I didn't lose one hand the entire night? Hey, hey, I won a hand. Mary, I let you win that one. You look like you're about to cry. <laughs> hey, Mary, what do you say? Let's hop on a plane and go to Atlantic City. Come on, I feel like doing something crazy. Frank, by asking me to go with you to Atlantic City, you have already done something crazy. Mary, don't worry. I want to take advantage of the casinos, not you. Hello? Yeah, hi. Uh, listen, what do you got for Atlantic City tonight? What? You can't be completely booked up. All right, all right. Listen, if you should get a cancellation, please call me. Frank DeMarco, 555-4711. Thank you. You're serious. Damn, what a waste. If I'm that hot, I can't be marooned in Chicago. Mary, you know any floating crap games, any high-stake poker, any bingo? I'll even play bingo. Frank, if you want a couple of hands of poker, it does not mean you can part the Red Sea. Nice. DeMarco, an hour and a half, first class, I'll take it. You're right, Mary, I can't be that hot. I'll probably have to wait a whole 10 minutes at the airport. <laughs> Two o'clock, Frank's still not here. Well, I hope he's having a good time with my money. I hope he's spent all of mine and all of his, and he's now standing on the boardwalk holding a cup. <laughs> Ed, over here, Tully. <laughs> I need your help, Ed. Uh, Gwen and I are celebrating our 30th anniversary, and uh, we want to commemorate it with something other than our usual argument. <laughs> 30th, let's see. 25 is silver, 50 is gold. What is the 30th? For the Tullys, it's bourbon. <laughs> I'm giving Gwen a bottle of bourbon. Uh, anyway, I wondered if you'd recommend a, a theater experience for the occasion. Oh, I'd love to. What do you like? Drama, comedies, musicals? I like prime rib. As long as they serve prime rib, I'm a happy man. Well, uh, frankly, I, I found that dinner theater can be somewhat pedestrian. Uh, how about expanding the Tully horizon and seeing a local production of Torch Song Trilogy? What's that about? Oh, a uh, homosexual fellow, a transvestite, whose entire life is explored in three acts. You actually show the acts? <laughs> Evanston Dinner Theater, same time next year, Bernard Slade's bittersweet play about a couple... Prime of... rib? You're on your own, Tully. Excuse me, where would I find Mary Brenner? You're Mary Brenner. Yes. I'm Lillian Ferguson. I called you earlier and explained that I have a problem, and you said that you usually like your readers to send their requests through the mail, but you said that I could come down here in person because I sounded so pathetic on the phone. No, I never said that. That's what you implied. How? 
by letting me come down here in person. Anyway, I read your column every day, and I see the wonderful things that you do to help other people, and I'm hoping that you can help me, too. Well, I'll, I'll see what I can do. Would you like to have a seat? You're so helpful in every little way. <laughs> You're an angel. Thank you. Now, what seems to be the problem? Recently, my aunt passed away. You know, Mary's good, but uh, she can't do anything about that. <laughs> no, no. She left my brother Stan and me a large sum of money, but my brother has been away for five years. We've lost contact. I've tried everything. I've called his friends and his business associates. I brought a list and his photograph. You're my last hope. Well, I'll, I'll certainly see what I can do. Thank you. It's so wonderful to have someone like you to turn to. You care enough to be there, to try your best to give some hope to people like me that would be lost without you. Lillian, I'm paid to do this. Not enough. <laughs> By the way, as long as I'm here, the freeze frame on my VCR is kind of fuzzy. I was wondering, Lillian, why, why don't I try to find Stan first? You're right. Stan is more important. Thank you so much for your time and trouble and the chair. God bless you. Morning, troops. Yeah. It was great. I've been up all night. I couldn't lose. Craps, blackjack, roulette. I even played a Chinese game I didn't understand and I won. How did you win, Frank? Six thousand dollars. Six thousand dollars. You know how long it'd take me to earn six thousand dollars at twelve sixteen an hour? Four hundred and ninety-three hours. <laughs> hey Ronnie! Yo! The sports department gets the racing form, don't you? Uh no, but I'd be happy to run someplace and buy one for you, Chief. I think they have in the lobby, Ron. Would one from the lobby be okay? Fine. Okay. <laughs> so you're uh Betting on the horses now, are you, Frank? Not necessarily, but if while I'm looking at the racing form, I should run across a horse that has only four legs, I might bet on it. You could save some of the money, you know. Mary, you don't understand. I'm on a roll. I got. I know you're hot. You're cooking. You're an inferno. Frank, that was Leibowitz down at the courthouse. Ray Damon is going to confess, and we've got an exclusive. Now, why am I not surprised? Who's Ray Damon? He's an investment banker who's been playing free and easy with SEC regulations. Yeah, this guy's been stonewalling us for months. And then just like that, he decides to talk when our guy's the only one around. I don't know. When I get on a roll like this, it's like I'm in control. Everything just falls into my lap. Except, of course, you, Mary. <laughs> All right, everybody, listen up. I apologize for being late, but the budget meeting's still at 4 o'clock. I'm going to catch up on your copy, check the art, go through the wire. I don't want to be disturbed for the next half hour. You got it? Oh, when Ronnie shows up with the racing form, would you send him right in? 